What is up, boys and girls? Welcome back to episode two of Rocco Storytime. So today, we are talking about the day that I fled from the police in an SUV. And yeah, so today's story is very crazy. This is probably one of the craziest stories I've got. So let's let's get on with it. So at this time, I'm probably about fresh out of rehab, so I'm not really doing any drugs. I'm just smoking nicotine. So. Tonight's plans consisted of me driving over to my homie Omar's house just to hang out and, you know, chill that night. So we don't really know what the plans are for tonight, so we kind of just do this every night where we go off the bat and just, you know, see what we want to do. So I pick up Jack, Omar, and Caden. We're all driving around, and Caden is a pill fiend, all right? Caden loves him some blues. He also loves him some tinfoil. So they bust out the blues, and they start smoking take the blues off the tinfoil. I don't participate in this kind of buffoonery. I've never, ever participated in this kind of buffoonery, and neither does Omar. So we just, we stay away from that, and they become noticeably irritated after smoking. So Jack has to get out of the car to use the restroom, and we let him out. We lock him out of the car for like almost a whole minute, and he is pissed. He is punching the window. He is yelling, screaming. He's making threats. It is just a hoot and a holler to watch it is hilarious we let him back in the car and now we're with a new character we're gonna call him John we're gonna call him John and we all collectively decide we're gonna go buy shrooms I could take shrooms technically but I didn't want to because I was only sober driver that night so I just I just didn't um we go pick up the shrooms I follow him home in a car I follow John home in his car because yeah, that's the name we gave him, John. I follow him home in his car because he doesn't want to drive on shrooms either, so I let him get in my whip. Now, I quickly begin to notice as soon as we get around John's house, I recognize this area. This was the area that my rehab center used to be located in, or was still located in. I don't know why I said used, but it was still there. So, it's very late at night, so this place is obviously not open, thank God. So, we drive over there. We're in the parking lot right in front of where my room used to be. So I used to have this window that would overlook the parking lot, and so did everyone else. So everyone who used to go there or still was there would be in their room by these windows. So I drive on over there. It's me and the boys, and we decide we're going to throw some rocks or something at the window try and wake someone up. I'm looking for my homies, and the only people we managed to wake up that day were the two girls there who I disliked the most. They were just mean people and I did not like them I ended up stealing a vape from one of the girls while we were in there and apparently we got the staff's attention I don't know if the girls notified them or if we did we were being pretty loud and so I just started driving around the parking lot and you know I wasn't being really the safest driver so we made a little bit of a scene someone pulled into the lot I don't know if it was security or not but he tried to block us in I drive over the curb and get the fuck out of there because I'm not about that. I'm not about getting in trouble. So I left. We go back to Omar's apartment, probably another half an hour. Um, yeah, nothing really happened on the drive over there. We got into some mischief while we were at his apartment, you know, doing a little ding dong ditching, a little fucking around. And it becomes time to drop John off. And John lives back in the area where we were just in, obviously. So I decide I want to have as much time back at Omar's apartment as I can. So I'm just going to speed over and I'm going to drop Omar off. I was speeding nearly the whole way there. It did save us a lot of time, but approaching up in the horizon, I saw what was a squad car, so I started slowing up. I started cruising the speed limit. I decided that I'm gonna get off on the exit in order to try and not get pulled over. As I'm pulling off on this exit, I think to myself, this is gonna add a lot more extra time than I need, so I just pull back on thinking nothing of it, and this, this is the part. All right, this is when shit hits the industrial mega grade fan. I get lit up. I am currently, I'm stressing. I, I'm not processing what's going on. No one else in the car is except Omar, okay? Omar is around my age, so he knows also what kind of trouble we could be in. He was intoxicated on shrooms, but it wasn't his first time doing it, so he knew what he was doing. He wasn't like completely out of his mind like everyone else in the car was. Everyone else in the car is not taking the situation seriously, and they are all laughing about it. And I'm I'm not sure if they're able to process it, so I just think to my instincts as fast as I can. 
I knew that if we got pulled over, we'd get caught with all of the paraphernalia we had in the car, but my license was, was also revoked. I was not supposed to be driving. So I think fast. I see another exit about a quarter mile ahead of me. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I floor it. And this rinky dink ass SUV starts punching it. I'm nearing 90 miles per hour. I'm going. I get off that exit, I slam on my brakes, take the hardest right I've ever taken off that exit and hauled ass until I didn't see that car again. I luckily escaped that situation unscathed. I can't guarantee this would happen multiple times in a row. I think I got very lucky and it was possibly just a terminated pursuit or something happened, but I got out of there. I was shitting bricks, I couldn't believe I pulled it off. So I dropped them back off at Omar's apartment and I'm also hanging out there as well. So we're there for a little bit, we're just discussing our night, or at least me and Omar are, we're the only two coherent ones here. A quote from the night is, stand up girls, and this one was from Caden. He would repeat this over and over again after being asked a question or possibly, you know, asked to go do something, he would say stand up girls, and that's all he would say. So we left, we left him to do that, and me and Omar are just chilling. Me and him go do a little bit of ding-dong ditching before I head out for that night. And this is where things took a turn for the worst, okay? Someone got upset. Someone got real upset, okay? So, apparently while we were ding-dong ditching, someone called the police. And that's reasonable enough, but we were also in an apartment, so... I don't know, kinda not expected. What was even more expected was what was gonna follow. So, Jack and Caden are walking through this apartment. They are tripping. They don't have shoes on either. And at some point, they got outside. One of the police cars that pulled up to investigate, you know, the ding-dong ditching incident saw them and recognized them as the two people who were with us. So, they got, like, pressed by the police, and they obviously saw that they were all fucked up. So, they're like, you know what, you're going to the hospital. So, Caden and Jack are brought to the hospital, not only without their shoes on, but since they're 18, the police don't need to notify their parents. So, they were just brought to the hospital, you know, without shoes on. I don't know actually how far away this hospital was, but I heard it was about 30 minutes by foot. So, after they woke up the next morning, they apparently traveled back to the apartment on foot without shoes. I was completely bewildered by this. This could have ended a lot worse. Like I said, don't do anything I've done. So yeah, that, that's it for today's video.